Hello everyone and welcome back to my crochet podcast number five. My name is Emma and I am the designer behind Emma Crafts Design. So you'll notice that I've changed the name of um, from a vlog to a podcast because I did realize that it's indeed a podcast and not a vlog. Um, so yeah, because I will show you every month or I try to every month to show you what um, I've been up to, the makes I've made, and um, my future projects, my works in progress and my future projects. So it's been a few months since I've been here with you. I have made a few video tutorials in the meantime, but um, I haven't really had the time to film any podcasts. Um, and that's just been because life's been really busy since Christmas. So I've actually um, got a new job, so <laughs> I'm now working full time which makes it a bit hard to crochet as well, but you know, um, yeah, I'm slowly getting the hang of it now, so that's good. Um, so yeah, without further ado, I guess we should get started because I have lots of things to show you. So let's get started with my finished projects first. So the first thing I want to show you is this number. So I have finished my advent calendar for next year. So what I'll do is I'll also cut some felt letters and then I'll put them onto um, the different, um, you know, squares. So I have made the Christmas tree and there are 24 pockets. So, yeah, and I've tried to kind of like arrange the colors so that it was nice. To look at but yeah so it's pretty big um it's finished i might actually do i don't really know i might actually do an extra border to hang it so maybe just not a border just like something so that i can put a rod and then hang it up um but yes that will be used this year for our advent calendar and i made the pockets big enough so that i can fit a couple of treats for the boys um and maybe for us too <laughs> so yeah, that'll be really good. I'm really excited to have finished this one and we'll definitely be using it this year. So that'll be really good. Um, this was a free pattern on the Yarnspirations website and I'll pop the link, the links to everything that I talk about in this podcast um, into a blog article where I'll add some extra pictures and I'll also just kind of give you a bit of a description and um, have the links everywhere at the same place so that it's easier for you to find because I find putting the links down um, in the YouTube descriptions is a bit confusing sometimes. So that's my first finished object. Then what else have I been making? I've made quite a few things, um, as you can imagine. Let's just continue on to the Christmas makes. So I've made this adorable little um, dwarf slash gnome. Um, so this was from the book um, that I tried to show you last time that had cut off. So it was a book um, that I borrowed from my local library. So I'll just um, put the details into the blog post, but yeah, so I, it was, uh, I think it's called Once Upon a, Once Upon a Time um, in Crochet. And it's a book that has a lot of different characters from fairy tales that you can crochet. And so this is actually an adaptation from one of the seven dwarves. So I made him as a little um, gnome center for Christmas. But I followed the pattern exactly, so um, yeah, so this is one of the little dwarfs that you make there. And obviously I just adjusted the colors so that it looks like a little Santa for Christmas. Um, and I had lots of fun making this guy. I think it'll just um, join our Christmas decorations, so that'll be perfect for next Christmas as well. Okay, so that was um, what I made around Christmas. Then came um, January, I was working a little bit on, um, I guess, um, Chinese New Year, so, or Lunar New Year, so I'll show you what I made for that. So I've made another free tutorial onto this um, YouTube channel um, to make a Chinese lantern, so um, yeah, that was also lots of fun to make. It's really good for little decorations. I have another one that I have made in red. And you can also embroider um, symbols on it if you'd like to wish good luck. And I thought it was a really cute little decoration for Lunar New Year. 
Um, and then I also made, every year I try to come up with the zodiac animals. And so this year I made the tiger for the year of the tiger. So this is um, Tony the tiger. Um, so yeah, I really had lots of fun figuring out all the color changes to make the little stripes in the back, the stripes on the side of the head. Um, there's quite a few color changes, but you know, I it was a little bit challenging to design to make sure that they fit at the right spot, but I really enjoyed it. And because it's all kind of color changes, um, there's not that much sewing um, of like, you know, extra things to make the colors. So that was a bonus too. There's a bit of sewing though. Um, but the good thing is that it can sit by himself. So yeah, so this is my third, um, I think third zodiac animal. So I've made a mouse or like a rat a ox last year and then a tiger this year and I'm hoping to continue in the years to come as well until I've made all 12 animals of the zodiac. So this is Tony the tiger and you can find a pattern on my website or on, on my Etsy or Ravelry shops. So that was for Lunar New Year, I made these two. Um, and then what else did I do? Um, oh yes, so then <laughs> Um, I actually got kind of windswept by, in January, there was the Ami Along that's hosted by um, Amigurumi.com and it's one of my favorite um, crochet designer who um, designed for the Ami Along um, at that point. Her, um, so you probably know her because she's really well known. Her name is Janine and she's um, Moji Moji Designs. And um, yeah, I've been following Janine pretty much since I started crochet. Um, yeah, so I saw her designs and I was like, I have to make this. So, um, there were the, um, oh, what was the pattern called? Feather Friends. So, I made two birds from the pattern. So, with the pattern, I think it comes with five different types of birds that you can make. And I just adapted the colors of mine. So, this was with the base of the... Um, sulfur crested cockatoo and I made myself a pink gala because I love those birds so um, yeah so I really love how it turned out and the reason why I made this one is because we actually have a flock of galas who live just down the street so yeah I just thought it would be lovely to make um, another crochet version I also have my own gala that I've made but like yeah I really just wanted to make a gala for myself so this guy will be living with my own gala and then i've also made this one so this these colors are based on a sun conyu and i have one of my friends who's got three sun conyus now and so this is going to be a gift for her so yeah i just adapted a little bit the pattern um to make the tail like this um but apart from that this was the pattern to make the budgie so I just adapted the budgie pattern to make a sun conyer. So I changed the colors around the eyes to make the typical, um, you know, red patches that they have around their face. And then I've also changed the colors on the wings to make um, the blue and green feathers that the sun conyers have. So I'm really happy with how, how it turned out. But the best bit about this pattern that I was really excited to make is <laughs> my very own bird swing. <laughs> So this is just so cool. Um, I've put some um, skewers, like some wooden skewers in it. And you can just have your birds like sitting onto it. It's kind of like a little perch for them. So yeah. <laughs> I just really love making it. It was really fun. Um, I'm going to try to find a spot to hang it in my house. And then I can just have um, a few of my birds, I guess, just sitting on there. So that'll be really fun. And I really enjoyed making that pattern. It was, it's always really fun to participate in the Ami Along. I don't know if you've ever um, done so, but I would love to know if you have participated before because I always have lots of fun when I do. Um, I don't participate often because... Oh, you know how it is. I just have like a mile long project list, but I try um, as much as I can <laughs> to um, do my own designs. But sometimes it's just really nice and refreshing to do other people's patterns as well. So, yeah, I just really had fun making this. Um, talking about other people's designs, 
I was also a tester for Ohana Hook, so I've talked to you before about her, but I really love her designs, and she made her very first um, male elf, so I had to make him, um, and Clark loves him, and he's been like, kind of sleeping with him, wanting to sleep with him, and things like that, so um, yeah, it's really sweet. Um, this is Forced, so he's the first elf, and I just really like his story, so Claudie has... Um, a whole heap of really wonderful stories. Unfortunately, they're only in French, but yeah, her stories are just really, really cute um, and wonderful and just full of magic. And so Forced is the first elf and he's got really cute little details like this little heart. So he's made of stone and wood and this is supposed to be a jade heart. Um, so yeah, I just really like how it turned out. Um, and I used some kind of variegated yarn to make his pants. Because um, that kind of reminded me of the bark of a tree to make his wood pants. But you can actually, I won't undress him, but you can actually undress him as well. Um, I did sew the pants on, but I think you can still like slide them off. And of course his little jacket can come off as well. So it's fun to play with as well. Um, and I really like his little like curly hairstyle, it's pretty nice. Um, so yeah, that was Forced, the first elf by Oana Hook. Um, and yeah, I really love making him. Um, then I also had lots of fun in February because I wanted to um, test some chenille yarn. So this is um, the DMC Happy, um, Happy Chenille. And... Um, yeah, it's so soft. <laughs> so this is like really cool because it's just really soft. Yeah, so this is Goldfish by Theresa's Crochet Shop. Um, she makes a lot of really cute animal patterns and they're really simple and quite fast to make. So I think this took me le like a couple evenings to make. And that was with me being quite busy and not crocheting much. So yeah, they're really fast. Um, and I think it's really good for that kind of yarn because... so. It looks really lovely and it's really soft and really nice, but there were a few challenges with um, crocheting it. So first off, it broke really easily, so you can't really pull your stitches too much. And that means that it was a bit challenging as well to do any sewing with it. So it's a good thing that there's not much sewing with this pattern, because I think it would be a struggle. Um, yeah, it would be a struggle to sew too much um, with this yarn but that being said I just really love the look it look it's squishy it's soft I can't stop patting it um, and I love my little goldfish so I've got from her a pattern to make a whale um, triceratops and a ladybug and a sloth I think so I've got a few patterns from her and um, that I haven't made yet but I really need to get onto it because um, yeah it was just really fun to make so I've got some more Chanel um, like DMC Happy Chanel so I'm going to use that to make a triceratops um, for Clark because he's still loving dinosaurs and then I'll see what I'll use to make the other ones yeah I'm really excited to make the other patterns that I got from her so still in my finished project, I was very excited to get this one done. So um, in February again, that was this guy. So this is Greg the Care Bear. I've shown you my other version that I had made previously in a previous podcast. Um, but so I released him on the 28th of February, which is Rare Cancer's Day. And the story behind making him was that I got contacted by an Australian um, yarn shop owner in September 2020. Um, and we had talked about getting this guy designed in memory of her later husband, Greg. So Greg passed away in 2017 from a rare cancer. Um, and he was so, so young. And it was just really devastating and so Carla, um, the owner of Yarn Artistry, um, just really wanted to make, and that's when she started crochet, and it actually brought her a lot of, you know, um, comfort, I guess, with 
going through, you know, interminable um, just waiting at the hospital and, yeah, just the angst of being there and of seeing her husband's health just go downhill it must have been so tough. Like, I don't really know how anyone can go through this. And my heart really goes out to her. But that's when she discovered her passion for crochet. And so she wanted to make um, a design that was easy enough for beginners, but that could also bring comfort um, if anyone was going through hard times. So we have come together with the idea for Greg the Care Bear. And so Greg is, um, his head and body are all made in one piece. And then you saw um, the different bits um, to him. But there's pretty much just increases and decreases and single crochets to make him. So there's no really hard techniques or anything. And you can customize him um, to have the different um, support colors for cancer. So here I made a teal one because, um, you know, February is also um, uterine, no, ovarian cancer month. And so, yeah, so I made a teal one and I think I'm going to make a pink one as well because I've had a friend just go recently through breast cancer. So, yeah, I was just really proud to um, get to be part of this project and make this design. And so all the proceeds, so minus any fees that I have to pay to the platforms, but pretty much all proceeds um, of sales from Greg the Care Bear um, will go to Rare Cancers Australia. So I'm just going to donate all that for Rare Cancer Research in memory of Greg. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to make your very own care bear, he's also very huggable. Um, or um, just let your friends know if they're looking for a project, you know, for someone who might be a survivor or might be going through um, cancer and just in a hug, you know, especially with COVID, we're still going through weird times where you can't really visit people at a hospital. It's, it's all a bit tough. So yeah, so Greg the Care Bear, and everything will be donated to Rare Cancers Australia. So in March, I've made those guys. So um, clover patterns. So those are free tutorials that are now um, either on my website or on my YouTube channel. So I've done a video for them as well. And I just had lots of fun making them. Um, those don't take any stuffing at all. It's just crochet and then you just close it. Um, and yeah, I just had a lot of fun. I was also thinking, so to make the stem here, I used a technique called Romanian cord. And it's actually a technique that I've seen quite a lot recently. But that made me kind of think about um, all the different um, techniques you could use to make cords in crochet. For example, to make um, bag straps or, you know, if you don't want to crochet like a really thin like tube, there's other ways of doing things. So I think I'm probably going to make um, a little video, like a technical video, about how to make a whole bunch of different cords in crochet. So just let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. Um, but I think I'll probably aim to do that maybe next month or so. Um, so yeah, those were my St. Patrick's Day shamrock pattern. Um, and I made two of them because I've made one for the prototype and then I liked it straight away. So I just made another one for the YouTube video. And that was it. Um, so I think this is it for... Oh no, there's one more finished project that I can't show you, but I'll put pictures. So um, I've told you like before that I'm part of this um, crochet, um, like French crochet cooperative called La Ganguette. And um, one of the family members just recently had a baby. And so since November, we've been plotting um, to make her a blanket, um, like for her and for the baby. So it's like, it's actually pretty huge. It turned out really huge. But um, we each, so a lot of people have participated and we made some squares um, to then assemble into a blanket. And so... I have made three um, and I will um, just insert some pictures maybe over here so that you can see. Um, and yeah, so I've designed two of them and then another one is um, a free like crochet square pattern that I found. I can't remember 
where I got it from, but I will put all the details into the blog post. So the ones that I've designed, if you'd be interested, I actually have grids for them as well. So I've made um, the Australia shape because obviously um, I live in Australia and then I've made the rooster shape because that kind of brings back to, you know, my French background and obviously she's French as well. So yeah, and she also has chicken. So I thought that was a nice little um, like nod to that. And then the other one I just made because I thought, I thought it was really pretty. Um, yeah, so, and she's just received the blankets so and now I can talk to you about it. And she really loved it. So we had a few um, issues with me sending the blocks. Pretty much they arrived really, really late. Um, but yeah, really glad that I was able to participate in this project. And it was like, it was pretty fun. Um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> it was always good to do like one of those big collaborative projects. So yeah, I'm pretty glad I, I did it. Um, so that adds, I think that's it now for finished projects. There's a few more things that I finished, but I can't show you yet. So that will have to wait until a later time. Um, okay, so let's move on to works in progress. So I have a half finished sock to show you. Well, no, the sock is finished, but there's only one of them. So I'm going to count this as a work in progress because I haven't done the second one. But this is my Wanida sock. Um, I have to say I've been really bad. I haven't cast on the second one yet. Um, just because I've been so distracted and like, a, you know, a hundred thousand other projects on the go. But yeah, um, this is my Wanida sock. So I finished one sock and I will get started on the other one maybe soon. Because, um, yeah, it's a nice... The problem is that I actually have to count for the pattern. It's not really like a no-brain <laughs> project. So, yeah, I'll, I'll still get onto it because I really need a new pair of socks. So that will be nice to have. Um, now, the next thing I want to show you, I've just started like a couple of weeks ago. But I've been really slow going on to it. It is a jumper. So I finally found a use for um, this beautiful yarn cake from Hobie. So this is um, um, Dahlia Halloween. So that was one of the special Halloween colorways. Um, but I've got it like since last year. And so I've made a start on it. And so this is the yoke of the jumper. So you, you'll you see it's like, it's actually pretty, um, like, yeah, there's like a really nice, like kind of leaf pattern onto the jumper. Um, but obviously you have to wear something underneath because it's really like see-through. So yeah, but like I've been really enjoying working on it. Um, it's nice because once you get the repeats it's pretty easy going so yeah i'm looking forward to um have this one done because it'll be nice to have an extra jumper as well because we're going into winter in australia so it'll be nice to have something extra kind of to layer up um over what i'm wearing yeah so this pattern i don't think i've said but it's called the blossom um blouse and yeah it's called the Blossom Blast because it has that leaf pattern um, as I was mentioning so yeah that will be nice to work on and hopefully it's nice and cozy to wear for this winter I'm hoping I'll have it finished by then <laughs> surely right so that was the Blossom Blouse um, and I think that was from the Wee Crochet um, website I don't think I had mentioned this but yeah I'll put all the details anyway so and finally my last work in progress is a project for Easter so um, every year for Easter I've been making a series of um, free um, patterns so I'm, I've been making um, three different little eggs with a theme every year so in 2000 so I started in 20, 2020 and the theme in 2020 was plants, like botanical. So I made a cherry blossom, a cactus, and a carrot. So those were my three um, makes for 2020. And then last year, 
I decided to make some animals, so some kind of Easter or spring related animals. So I made a bunny, a chick and a bee. And then this year I actually got inspired. I asked on Instagram what you would like to see. And someone said dinosaurs. And I was like, of course. Like, I mean, both my sons are obsessed with dinosaurs. So I thought that was a really fun idea. So I've made dino eggs. So this is the Triceratops. Um, so this one is finished. <laughs> this one is the Parasaurolophus. Um, I haven't finished embroidering the eyes, but it's pretty much done. Um, I really actually enjoyed how this little horn has turned up. Like it's got, you know, like that crest where they used to blow into. But yeah, I really enjoy how that turned out. And then the last one is, <laughs> can you guess what that is? No. Um, this is going to be a Stegosaurus. So um, hopefully it will look like a Stegosaurus. Um, I think, you know, it will have like the little, um, the back plates. So at least, you know, you can kind of tell with that. Um, I'm not really sure how I'm going to do the face yet, but I'm sure I'll figure out something. I still have a little bit of time before Easter, so yeah, looking forward to that. But um, this will be a free pattern on my website as well. So that was it for works in progress. Um, and let's just move on to new things. So um, I've only got like a couple of new things. So I've already mentioned I've got some DMC Happy Chanel. Um, so I've got some in orange. As well but I won't show you it's just packed in my amigurumi yarn storage um, but I did want to show you um, my new hand dyed um, yarns that I got so I th well is it hand dyed yeah it is hand dyed so it's um, patterned um, and it's like an Australian brand um, who now does pattern mile artistry so it's hand dyed um, wool but it's actually um, by like this Australian company so I'm hoping that maybe the colors are a little bit more like I don't know reproducible I'm not really sure I just thought it was really nice colors and I just wanted to try it out because I've used pattern art before um, to make socks and I really liked it so I thought oh why not um, and bought this one so this is the cake I think it's going to look really gorgeous um, and yeah I just need um, to find a sock pattern to make with this so um, hopefully but first I need to finish my, finish my other socks but hopefully I also have another pair of socks after that um, onto my needles because I did mention I need <laughs> quite a few pair of socks so I need a few new pair of socks because my all my previous socks that I've made that I've knitted I've started having holes because I've just been using them up so yes that will be good to have new socks. Um, and I think this is probably it for me today. So I had lots to show you, but I think I managed to keep it pretty short. Um, hopefully I'm not talking too fast. But um, yeah, just let me know what you thought. I'm sorry, I was a bit kind of all over the place today. I think it's just because I've been just so crazy like really running around like a headless chicken between like my new job and you know still like have two kids so you need to like entertain them on the weekends and make sure that they like well fed and well cuddled and you know the usual um yeah it's been just a little bit crazy but I've still really enjoyed it I'm loving my new job um I don't think I mentioned but so my new job is I'm uh, working with plants so I'm a um, biologist um and yeah, I'm just um, doing like work with plants. So that's actually been inspiring me too. So I'm, you might actually see some more plant patterns in the future here um, because I'm just being really inspired by being around plants all day. So yeah, <laughs> hopefully you like plants as well as animals and you still enjoy watching what I make. Um, I will see you next time. I'll try to get that video done on crochet cords. If you're interested, just let me know. Um, and yeah, I'm sure I'll film some more video tutorials as well for you guys in the near future. So hopefully it won't be three months until my next podcast. Oh. <laughs> Let's cross our fingers so that I find some time to actually podcast a little bit more regularly. <laughs> All right. So that's it for me. Um, thanks a lot for watching. And um, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And give me a thumbs up if 
you liked it. That really helps me to be seen around. Um, yeah, thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye!